One's first reaction to this drawing must be one of delight at the powerful rendering of a dramatic moment in the Bible when the blind old patriarch Isaac refuses to bless his firstborn Esau because he's been tricked into giving his blessing to Jacob instead. The occasion is done full justice by the conception of the drawing. It is therefore surprising to find the scholars have swept it aside with the dismissive description, a copy after a lost original. At the second glance, one does notice that Esau has not got the substance that Isaac has. He is comparatively cardboardy. Isaac has all the three-dimensional presence and subtle characterization that one could hope for from Rembrandt at the peak of his form. It must be the lesser quality of the Esau that has persuaded scholars that this is a copy. But if so, why has the copyist made such a brilliant job of one figure and not of the other? Their description makes no sense whatever. May I offer another interpretation? This is one of a series of Rembrandt drawings of the same group of models round a bed, at least five of which were made from approximately this viewpoint. Others drawn from the other side of the bed that show Esau posing on that side of the bed, not as seen here. If you now look again at the figure of Esau, you will find that his body is insubstantial, though very expressive, but his head is of the same quality, or nearly so, as the Isaac. A very plausible explanation of this schizoid quality of this drawing is therefore that Rembrandt could have observed the head of Esau, but not the body because it was obstructed by the bed. Look once more at Esau's head, and you'll see that it's been enlarged by Rembrandt to bring it forward in space by the addition of the outer line of the top back of his head. A smaller head is still completely visible within the larger. If you are persuaded by my explanation, this drawing becomes immensely important to the student of Rembrandt because it shows us on one sheet the huge difference in quality that we should expect between Rembrandt observing from life and Rembrandt deprived of immediate visual reference. The same divide can be observed in countless other works by Rembrandt. I do not exaggerate. We have lost half the works previously attributed to Rembrandt precisely because today's scholars refuse to accept this dichotomy in his work. Arnold Haubrocken wrote... Caravaggio would not attempt a single brushstroke without a living model before his eyes. Our great Rembrandt was of the same opinion and was indeed faithful to the principle that one must follow only nature. Anything else was worthless in his eyes. Such a passage leaves the question open only in so far as was it a matter of principle or because Rembrandt was not able to do better. It should certainly prepare us to accept a different quality from Rembrandt when circumstances preclude a living model. Two of the most notorious of the de-attributions proposed by the Rembrandt Research Project include horses in movement, the Polish rider and the Frederick Ryle portrait. The horses particularly are criticised. The reason seems obvious. Rembrandt was obliged to work without an adequate model. This drawing has not been given serious consideration since the early 1920s, when Benish discarded it. The scholars are unable to accept that a single drawing can show Rembrandt at his most feeble and at his greatest.